Sorry, cowboy. It may not be a coach gun. Still hurts though, doesn't it? Yeah, Hickok 45 here. Taking it out on the cowboy right away with this fine old L.C. Smith shotgun. If you're not familiar with L.C. Smith, if you've never even heard that name, where have you been? Well, we'll give you a little information about L.C. Smith and why it's such a prestigious name uh, before you leave today. How's that? Is that a beautiful firearm or what? Look at that custom stock, 32 inch barrel. This would probably be one of the last firearms I would guess that gets banned. You imagine 12 gauge with double barrels, 32 inches long, tough to conceal, and it's a big old shotgun. Speaking of that, uh, we appreciate the support on LC Smith if it's hard on it to dry fire it or not. I'm, I'm just not sure, so I'll try not to do that. This is premium, premium. Uh, I, you know, I've never owned an LC Smith. I've never even fired one until this one came in. And uh, I'm not a hunter, I'm not a bird hunter, and I can't really do it justice probably in terms of a review of something like this. But I wanted to bring it to you and make you familiar with it. Uh, the, uh, this thing, and tell me, is it ugly or what? Not hardly. I'll try to be good with it and nice to it. Uh, you don't want to damage it. I don't think there's hardly a scratch on it. Now, this firearm, this shotgun was made in 1906. Oh, man, I was, a, I was barely a teenager then, and this thing was being manufactured. Now, originally, it did have a color case hardened, a receiver, lock plates there, and uh, it, it was refinished in 2014, they tell me. Okay, so not all that long ago. So some refinishing done there. And they put in Briley chokes. I've got those here. Those go with it. And I'm not sure which two are in it. I couldn't tell from, I used to do, well, I, I say used to, like I can't do it anymore. I've done some sporting clays just, just a, a few times. And yeah, some of them you can read what kind of choke it is. It doesn't really matter. I wasn't gonna change them out for what I'm doing with it. Uh, but it has Briley chokes, uh, the, uh, what are they called? The, uh, the thin wall, yeah, the thin wall Briley chokes are in it. And uh, that's, that's kind of nice if you're going to hunt with it. And it has 32 inch barrel. So basically any choke you want. Uh, you know, back in 1906, I don't think anybody used screw in chokes. That's a, <laughs> that's a more modern innovation. In fact, oh, I don't know. Well, you probably do if you're a shotgunner. It was maybe in the 80s, I don't know, 70s. When that's, it used to be when you bought a shotgun, you would buy extra sets of barrels. You remember that? I remember that. And you'll still see maybe those at a gun show. Some old, might be a Remington 870 or anything. And it'd be like six barrels go along with it. Or, you know, well, anymore now we just uh, ream out the end of the barrel. For those who don't know, well, you know, here we go. Assuming that you know what I'm talking about, right? And uh, this is an opportunity. I didn't even think about that. But what they do is they ream out, they take any old shotgun you got lying around, virtually any one of them, it's of course empty, opened up. You can, uh, you can just kind of ream out a little bit, take a little bit of metal, or basically you're just threading it, I guess, mostly. But, uh, well, you're reaming it out a little bit and you're threading it. And these are really thin, as you can see. And uh, then you end up with these, you screw them in there, because that's where your choke really is, the end of the barrel. And so you can take any shotgun barrel and, and virtually any shotgun barrel and turn it into almost any choke you want full choke modified open you know, just whatever you want so that uh, that's that was quite an innovation you could take any a single barrel shotgun a pump a semi-automatic with one barrel and just uh, take the choke out put a different one in okay now my over and under satori's that way i have it came that way it's only I don't know, how old is that thing now 25 30 years old but it uh you know, I, I've got skeet chokes in it. I just leave them in there, but uh, I can put lots of different chokes in it. So that's new. They didn't have that in 1906. Makes it more versatile though. So let's put some ammo in this thing. We're, we're shooting federal ammo. Imagine that. And I'm just gonna shoot, you know, seven and a half uh, target loads in it. I'm not gonna try to put slugs through this thing or any, any, you're not gonna experiment with a bunch of different loads. We'll just shoot some uh, kind of field loads with it. And again, I don't really have a, a good place to shoot clay pigeons here. They run into the trees awfully quickly. Although I thought about it maybe, like right here, shooting some out at some time, get a, get a thrower, do a little of that. But uh, we might do that sometime. I, if I see a bird in a tree, 
I could, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. All right. Notice the safety is kind of interesting here. You can see safe right there. There's a hole in it, and you can read S through that hole, and you push it forward. <gasps> covers up the S, so I bet you it's not safe right now. Oh, let's go. Yeah, two liters not safe. <laughs> yep, it wasn't safe. So, bang, there you go. It's empty. You know, I happen to have a couple in my pocket. Let's put a couple more in. And you know what? This is such a beautiful shotgun to celebrate. Why don't we smoke a pot? Well, that smoked it. Let's smoke the other one here. <laughs> Shot high. Two shots. That's what you get. Pretty neat. This is a hunting shotgun. Uh, you're right. It's not a coach gun. Uh, not a home defense shotgun. <laughs> you imagine getting up in the middle of the night, you hear something. Oh, man. Bang, bang against the doorways and everything else. Would you like to see it broken down a little bit? It's clear, of course. Pull it far enough. That's the way most of these double barrels uh, break down, if you didn't know that. Uh, you know, you start like that, you're good and sturdy, well put together, but all it takes is get your finger under there and pull that off. Got the serial number under there. I guess since this is going for the E-Gunner and NRA FFF and all that, it's a 308,000, 308,000. You can look that up. I looked it up and Bud's and them looked it up. We, we concurs 1906 appears to be the date and there you go so that's how they, they come apart to that point uh good old gun nice case you can tell you know <laughs> uh that uh, this isn't the kind of thing you get a high point carbine in is it uh, not to pick on high point carbines it's just the money that goes into a creating and making manufacturing a shotgun like this and, you know a nice case comes along with it and all the tools you need uh just you know, leather, it's, it's pretty cool. L.C. Smith guns, not bad, not bad. I, I don't really hunt, so I don't have a, a lot of purpose for one of these. Uh, I'd hate to even get one and cut it down, you know, an L.C. Smith, and I, mean, you know, I wouldn't be beyond owning it maybe if somebody else had done that. <laughs> then I could just make fun of it. Ah, someone cut down this L.C. Smith, can you believe that? Now it's my coach gun or whatever. It's interesting how that, you don't want to force it there. I'll show you this right here. Some of you that are smarter than I am, which is like everybody. Whoops, the way that, those have to be down, I think. And there's something there you have to hold your mouth right. There we go, I don't know what that was about. Uh, but yeah, the, if you're not a hunter, I'm not sure what you'd do with it, other than just owning an L.C. Smith is, is pretty cool. Yeah. Even one that's been refinished. They did a nice job on it, I think. Uh, you know, as I say, they came uh, color case hardened and the receiver and everything, and, and maybe it was just in such bad shape they felt like it was more valuable or better looking if it was refinished, reblued that part of it. So, and you can't tell necessarily, you can't feel it, but the lockup, oh man, it, it's, it has the feel of, the word would be precision, you know, it really does. Uh, and this is the double aught grade. It, it, I meant to show you it was on the receiver there. Zero, zero grade. The lowest grade for an L.C. Smith, okay? Then there was the O, there was all these other letters and the pigeons and all that stuff, which I'm not all that familiar with. But this is the lowest grade. Later on, after, I think, 1913, it was considered the field grade. They started calling it the field grade. But this was kind of the bread and butter gun. But it's... Lest you think it's a piece of junk because it's the low end grade, it's like having a Mercedes or a, uh, or a Rolls Royce, you know, without maybe some options on it, okay? Uh, it's still a Rolls Royce, it's still an L.C. Smith. Uh, is, uh, from my reading, the other grades, the higher grade guns, basically you're getting cosmetics. The same gun mechanically, okay? Same construction and all that. Uh, it's just that you get color case hardening, you get engraving, and you get all those things, you know, if you go up, up in grade, okay? So this is a basic, basic gun, but it's an L.C. Smith, built like an L.C. Smith, all right? Let's take a couple more shots. All right. Again, we appreciate Federal helping us out. Buzzgunshop.com. And so we've got our safe there. Oh. The help and support we're getting from the NRA. I'm just going to put one on that target. Let's back up a little bit, John. <laughs> this is a little close with this long barrel. We'll just put one on the paper. 
and put it in the case. Boom! Yeah. Let's take, oh, look. We, after all, can do some bird hunting. There's a bird. Ah, uh, did you see him? Look at that. Boy, I missed my calling. I picked him off and didn't even hit that two liter. I'm impressed. I am impressed. Doesn't take much to impress me though, does it? So that is pretty cool. And again, hopefully I've explained this right. I don't mean to confuse everybody. The, the NRA FFF, uh, Fires for Freedom, it's just a, a program they have where uh, people can make donations to help the cause for the Second Amendment by just donating firearms. And people do that in their will. They'll, they'll leave. They don't have family or, or maybe if they do, they'll leave some of their firearms or all of them, you know, just to the NRA to support the, the cause. You know, and again, again, there's always NRA haters and, you know, that's, that's just always going to be there. But uh, most of us with a lot of experience in shooting and, and uh, gun rights just know they're, they're, they're necessary. Some people would call them a necessary evil. I won't go that far. Uh, you you just need to uh, support gun rights and uh, hopefully everybody's doing that so let's shoot that cookie pan that I got out of my wife's kitchen there we go I'll put it back in the shelf now I'll shoot it again before I put it back <laughs> and I'll claim I don't know anything about it uh, let's get dirty I should have cleaned it before I uh, I fired it before the video and yesterday a few times, but I, I thought, well, we don't need to, there we go. Cool, it's still tight, as you can see, it's like new, and uh, just a, a pretty gun. Well, a couple of things, I, I'm like, I don't know everything there is to know about L.C. Smith. I do know they started back in the later 1800s, and uh, he was making hammer shotguns, had really good design, making great guns, and uh, had a, a reputation established and then he got, in 1888, I think it was, he sold the company, actually. He got a little bit bored with shotguns, L.C. Smith, you know. And he sold to Hunter, it's on the barrel, uh, Hunter Arms, yeah, Hunter Arms Company, okay. He sold it to, to John Hunter, was the guy's name. And they kept the L.C. Smith name, and I guess kept improving it, but they were, it was already an established quality shotgun. And uh, he went off. He had a, he, I guess he had a mind like that. He, he had things in his head. He wanted to create a typewriter or a better type. Anyway, he is the Smith and Smith Corona typewriters. Can you believe that? That's L.C. Smith, the same guy. Came up with the Smith Corona typewriter. But uh, the L.C. Smith shotgun lived on all the way up through like 1945 or something. And that's when it really established its reputation through, you know, when this one was made and right on up into the 1940s. So pretty cool gun. Uh, this this model comes in armor steel. Uh, some of them were in Damascus. This one's armor steel, and uh, pretty cool gun. Let's shoot it again. All right. I can think of some more lies to tell you about it. Uh, oh, I know what I was going to tell you, and I don't know a whole lot about it. Again, I I have some double barrel shotguns, but I you know they're what are they? They're you know what they are. You've seen them all. This is considered a side lock, and that goes back to old to Britain. And Holland and Holland, some of those companies were famous for making these really high quality uh, shotguns. And they were able to make a side lock, which is, I understand, a little more complicated. And you have to really know what you're doing to make a sturdy gun, a durable gun, reliable, that is a side lock rather than a box lock. And the box lock is easier to make. And, but L.C. Smith is considered maybe the, the first company, if not the only, to make really high quality side lock shotguns in this country. Okay, and that's what this is. And so it's just a really nice uh, shotgun mechanically and operationally. I think the side lock was just considered smoother and uh, just a more desirable shotgun. And then I also read that uh, L.C. Smith, it was in I think 1877, he was sitting around, he wrote that, you know, my life and my goal in life really is to come up with a shotgun that will totally destroy a watermelon and that's what he did okay that's what he did that was his life's ambition he achieved it uh this thing with a 32 inch barrel will definitely do that i won't hear too much more ah oh, man ah Again, this kind of illustrates, I think, to some extent, you know, 
uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm hopeless, uh, incorrigible. If there's a, a, a firearm of almost any kind that's well made or it's just interesting, I'm interested in it. You know, what, what use do I have with a 32 inch shotgun? And you might think, why would I even want to shoot the thing? I, I just can't resist. It's an LC Smith. That's why I requested it. And it's cool. It's considered one of the best shotguns ever made. And here it is in my hand. I get to shoot it. Again, thanks to you all. You know, we're, we're busy thanking people, you know, that, that help us and support us all the time. But we probably don't thank you guys enough because the fact that you, you come and see what we're up to uh, makes all this possible. So again, we appreciate you all, you know, more than anybody watching these videos and, you know, coming to visit when I've got something really cool like this. It's just neat. I, again, there's no hope for me. I, I enjoy a submachine gun and I enjoy a double barrel shotgun with a 32 inch barrel, you believe it? And killing a two liter with it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put one at the gong. I wonder if any, any of the shot will get there. I don't know, you might have been able to see that. Maybe not. All right. So, uh, L.C. Smith, what lies did I neglect to tell you about it? So, if you're at the NRA meeting, you know, come by the NRA uh, uh, Firearms for Freedom uh, booth, and uh, I'll check the description. I don't know if I've updated them. I'll, I'll probably update them tonight, which was probably last week when you're seeing this. So, it should be up to date uh, about when all the meet and greets will take place. And we're going to be at the actually at the NRA FFF uh, booth uh, on Saturday afternoon, I believe. I think it's around 12 o'clock. But look in the description. It's either 12 to 1 or 1 to 2. I think it's 12 to 1, perhaps, or 1 to 2 for sure. It's right in there. It's in the description. Check it out. We'll be there. Come by there and see us. We'll be at the federal booth and uh, uh, at the SDI booth. So we've got all that in the description. All right. So we hope you come by and say hi. All right, be sure you do uh, because, you know, it's just probably uh, a little bit un hard to believe, you know, how dumb that, that I can be on video. You need to come by and see John and me in person and uh, kind of confirm all that, you know, all your, your worst fears will be there. And this gun will be at the NRA booth, like I said, the NRA FFF booth, and among some others. Uh, there were some other cool guns. There was a Model 29. There were, there were several that would have been interesting to to do a video with but we've already done okay so come check them out and again 100 percent of that goes to the nra and we appreciate again the nra and uh, helping us out and uh, appreciate y'all coming to watch and i wish you could feel this firearm and feel that that action that lockup uh, i may just do that for a couple hours after y'all leave life is good Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, because I know I sure did. Well, I've got you here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing, and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience, even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're gonna wanna think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere. Um, Cause some of these look pretty good.